Hello, it's Scott Manley here with part four of my uh, walkthrough of Kerbal Space Program for the complete newbie. So what we've just done is gone into high Kerbal orbit. The next place we're going to go is to the moon, but not onto the surface. We're just going to fly to the moon, fly around it and come back. And we're going to learn a lot about maneuvering in space. So uh, what we want to do is send our, set our spacecraft up for this. First thing I want to do is we want to make this thing a little bigger because we would like to have more science. There's going to be high altitude science and low altitude science, so we need two of each experiment. The next thing we want to do is extend this stage, so we're going to put a bigger fuel tank on it. There we go. We're going to keep that small efficient engine and the other thing we want to do next is add these rechargeable battery packs. We'll put a few of them on there because we're going to be in a long mission and we want to make sure that our pilot is kept safe and sound. Now, because we've made this whole lot heavier, we now need a bigger and beefier stage down here. So we're going to ditch these little boosters and grab this off of here. And we'll stick on another fuel tank. So we are now going to burn four fuel tanks. But of course, having this uh, means that it's not powerful enough to lift the rocket. So I have to add the solid rocket boosters back but since we've unlocked these big solid rocket boosters we can put four of the big ones on and those those are lined up perfectly you're going to make sure those are on straight there those should help me uh, get into space a whole lot faster i'm going to replace these now because we've added all this extra mass it means that now it will be slightly harder to steer so i'm going to put the winglets on we're going to put four winglets around here Unlike these, the T1 winglets, the T1 winglets are static and just keep you going in a straight line. The R8s, they actually move back and forth and they will actually help you steer. So they will enhance your ability to steer rather than inhibit it. But they will also help you keep straight. Okay, so we've got a rocket built more or less. Now we need to make sure the staging is correct. So uh, go over to the side, put all my solid rocket boosters down here, put my main engine down here. And I think everything else is ready to go. Let's rename this uh, Moonar Orbit. It's a good idea to save this. And let's launch. Okay, so we're sitting on the launch pad. It is daytime, so this is a perfect time to go. And uh, I'm going to fire up my engines. Uh, I should have probably adjusted the throttle a little. It doesn't matter. We're going to go to 100% throttle really quickly and then throttle back. Three, two, one, go. And I'm going to point myself over just a little. And as soon as my velocity gets above about 130, I'm going to throttle this way back to zero. Because these engines will do more than I need. If you go above like 200 meters per second below 10 kilometers, you get into that regime where you really start to feel the drag. So now I'm probably wasting a lot of fuel by burning against the, the atmosphere here. It doesn't matter, you know, we have plenty of fuel in this main stage. As we get down here, we want to throttle our engine back up to 100%. Uh, because we want to be going at 100% when we burn out. And there we go, perfect. So of course now we're slowing down very quickly because we really don't have enough thrust to keep ourselves uh, accelerating. But all the same, it's starting to balance out relatively quickly and I'm just trying to bring the nose over. I want to bring it slowly down to the 45 degree mark and hopefully keep it going. Again, if you remember, we want to get into orbit first, and to get into orbit, we have to be moving sideways at about 2.3 kilometers per second. So now we're actually starting to accelerate at more than 1G because we've burnt some of our fuel. You see, they are empty, getting empty, and meanwhile, we are getting into orbit. Let's just check the map here. So I'm going to hold it on the 45 degree mark and it says 50 seconds, right? So if I click uh, if I click on the Apple apps, yeah, it'll remain showing. So the classic trick that I like to use is try keep this about one minute. So if it starts growing, you move the vehicle's nose towards the horizon more 
and that means that you don't accelerate into orbit nearly as quickly. If your time to apoapse is rising too quickly, then it means you're following a very steep trajectory and it's less efficient. If, on the other hand, it is going downwards and it's less than a minute, then you should probably raise your nose up to bring yourself, because it means your orbit is too shallow. So by going into a shallower orbit, it means we're spending more of our fuel going sideways, less of our fuel going upwards, and that means we probably have more fuel left ultimately in the end. Now, what we're looking for is when our apoapse hits about 100 kilometers, then we will cut our engines and wait for us to cruise up to the altitude so that we can insert ourselves into orbit. Once in orbit, everything becomes calm. And there we go. So right now we're suborbital. Of course, we do our standard maneuver node. We click on the point of apoapse. We grab the maneuver node. We grab the, the prograde marker. And we drag this out until it's about 100 on both sides. And you see how those flip... See when I move that, they flip position? That's because your apoapse and your periapse are switching positions. So if we get it about there, that should be pretty close. This will be 103, that'll be 103. Excellent. So we have 16 second burn at in 2 minutes and 24 seconds. Before I get to where I'm going, I'm going to turn the spacecraft to point the direction I want to go. And I'm going to probably start about 16 seconds beforehand because I don't think I'm going to have enough fuel to actually, in this stage. So there, we're going to lock that. Time accelerate now. And we only time accelerate at about times 10 because if you do it too fast, it's very possible to skip past that. And if you skip past that, you will start falling back towards the surface. And if you fall back to the surface, you might eventually hit the surface. There we go, firing up those engines. We're gonna get a couple of hundred, few hundred meters per second. And bingo, ditch that, fire this engine. That's us. So once we're in orbit, as I said, everything becomes calm. We can very carefully consider our maneuvers. We have no science to get at this altitude. Well, I mean, there is science we could get, but uh, we're not going to cover that right now. We're mostly going to cover getting ourselves to the moon because we want to get close to the moon. Kerbals have never been to the moon before in your particular version. So the moon is there, right? What we want to do is take this orbit and make its apoapse, the highest position, go all the way to the moon's orbit so that when the moon gets there, we get there. Now, as you know, if you take a maneuver mode, if you if you start burning prograde on one side of your orbit, then the other side will go higher, right? See this? So by grabbing this maneuver node here, uh, what I'm doing is I'm pushing the furthest point of the orbit outwards. And you can see that's 3,000 kilometers, 6,000 kilometers. The moon itself is about 11,400 and so there we go, 11,341. So we've put the maneuver, uh, put the furthest point of this orbit right over where the moon's orbit would be. However, you'll notice that when, uh, well, if I was to do this, you would go up there and the moon would not be there. By the time we get up there, the moon will have moved around its orbit. It will have moved in this direction very slowly. So what you can do is once you've set that up, you can grab the middle of the maneuver node and drag it. And if you watch, you will suddenly see an encounter, right? And an encounter is where we change. There we go. We go from orbiting the planet Kerbin to orbiting the moon. And that's a pretty good one. We can kind of move it back and forth. Now, the th key thing to note here is as I move it back and forth, we're changing the conditions of the encounter. And you see what's going to happen is after we hit, uh, fly past the moon at 267 kilometers, it will kick us up into this orbit. You can also do the reverse. You can fly past the moon and have it kick your orbit downwards so that you come back to the planet Kerbin. That's called a free return trajectory. But this one is fine. I'm not caring too much because we have plenty of fuel. So... We'll take that maneuver node, we'll move our spacecraft until it's over the blue marker, and now we can time accelerate our way around the planet 
enjoy the sunset as we're waiting 26 minutes. Of course, 26 minutes will ha pass in a matter of seconds as we fly across. The nice thing about being in orbit is that sunrises and sunsets happen with alarming regularity. There we go. That's the second time we've passed around the Terminator here. So I'm letting the node come up with seven, six, five. Don't overshoot this. Two, three, two, one. And now it says one minute and ten seconds. So this says one minute and ten seconds. If I start burning now, I will finish the burn at the position of the node. What I really want to do is split this 50-50. So I want to have it about T minus 35 seconds, right? There we go, 46, 45. There, when it hits 35, that's when I'm going to start firing my thrusters. There we go. So it's going to take one minute. This is actually a pretty stable spacecraft, so you can use time acceleration. And to do time acceleration or physical time acceleration, while in orbit, you hold the ALT key and you press the either the greater than, the full stop or the period key, depending upon which particular piece of punctuation fits the flavour of what you're trying to do. Uh, I like to think of them as a less than and greater than sign, but many people look at them as the full stop and the comma key. So now I'm going to cut back to regular. If we come here, we can see our orbit is actually going upwards. See that? And I'm going to slow down the thrust just a little because we don't want to overdo it. And there we go, we've got an encounter. So I'll just keep thrusting while my periapse drops. So I'm going to mouse over this and watch my periapse drops. And periapse being the closest approach to the moon in this case. Uh, we want... Oh! And that is where the, the game gets a little confused. It thinks that we're going to fly past and then not really get it. But I'm going to do just a little further. I'm going to follow through in this. Oh, there we go. 320. That's okay. So close this. We will get an encounter 320 meters per second. And in fact, this would fling us out to Minmus, but I don't think... Yeah, I could in theory use this to get to Minmus, but I'm not going to because this is far too complicated. So at this point, I would advise you to press F5 to save. You should have a Mooner encounter by now. It doesn't matter how close it is, as long as you stop when you're inside the Moon's sphere of influence. So time accelerate up. You can watch this fly away. Look at that. Beautiful. So uh, go into the map screen and you want to time accelerate until you cross into the Mooner Encounter region and then you want to stop. Now watch the nav ball when I switch. What will happen is this is the artificial horizon with respect to the planet Kerbin. As soon as I cross this, it will become the artificial horizon with respect to the Moon. Watch it, watch it, and flips. There we go. So now... We're going to fly by. We're actually close enough to the moon that we can do some science. So what I'm going to do is put it in a vertical orientation because it's a good place to do EVA from. And we're going to grab some science. Let's observe the material bay. Their high radiation environment causes a few of the samples to glow. It looks like it would be fun to paint the rocket with this. Let's keep that. Observe the mystery goo. The goo seems to be less dense here. Great. And we can do a crew report as well. You look down at the cold grey surface. It looks really beat up with craters. So we've got three pieces of science. And we get the fourth one from our EVA, right? EVA report. You've recorded your observations. Keep that. Now, I want to move all these things into the capsule. First of all, you want to take the data from the capsule and store it. Right? And then space to let go. R to fire up the RCS, and L to put on the light is nice. So we're just going to slide down using the control key, move in close enough that we can collect the data, and it'll warn you that once you've done this, you can no longer reuse the experiment, and that's fine. Collect this data, and we have that. Again, the mystery goo experiment, once you take the data, there is no going back. That's why I have two of these. So fly back, press the F key to get in, and now we're going to figure out how to get close enough to the surface. 
So the way you do this, obviously, is at the point of perihelion, or periat, sorry, you want to add a maneuver node and slow down, use it by pulling this retrograde marker. You can pull it, and what you want to do is then click on this, uh, hopefully, yeah, there it is, click on it so it will remain visible. So we want to drag that down to about 20 to 30 kilometers. You don't want to be too close, uh, you don't because you know you could hit a mountain. You want to be close enough that you get the good science. And obviously, because my Apple apps and Perry apps have switched locations, I need to click on this one again. Isn't that confusing? There we go. 40, 35. Don't hit the surface. 33, 32, 31. There we go. So it says we are going to maneuver in one hour, 21 minutes. We're obviously going to point at this. And. There we are, flying towards the moon. I can time accelerate, and I can know how far I can time accelerate because I figured this all out beforehand. So we'll skip up to a thousand times. Watch this. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Uh, there, there we go. Okay, so we're flying past the moon, but we're still a long way up. And I'm gonna start firing the engine. Well, I could start firing it now, to be honest. It wouldn't make too much difference here. So there's my engine. Engine firing. Uh, we've got to take about 300 meters per second off. What happens is we're slowing down our velocity so we're not going to escape from it. And then we're continuing to bring the the Apple apps down and then bring our Perry apps down. And then I'm just going to roll off, reduce my thrust as I get close... And that's pretty good, 27 kilometers. Kill my maneuver node, and we're ready. We're gonna fly around until we're at closest approach. So yeah, once again, we just time accelerate. Now, with the moon, you can get also get science from landing on it. There's multiple biomes and everything that you can collect from various locations. You can also get it while flying over it in EVA mode. Uh, but that can be kind of hard to do. If you really want to do the maximum amount of science, you want to fly over the moon while in EVA. I'm going to put this in vertical position again so that we can actually get the full science. So we'll start observing the materials bay, and it says high radiation environment. You see, materials study while in space near the moon. Keep that. Observe the mystery goo. The goo feels right at home. Keep that. Get a crew report. While space near you, look at the surface of the moon and try to find a good landing space. The inside of the craters might be the best option. It might be. And of course, time to EVA. And you'll notice, EVA report, it says, just above the moon's midlands. So if you go into orbit, you can actually get different EVA reports from all the different locations. Yeah, I mean, if I wanted, I could slow this spacecraft down and get all the science, get science from a whole lot of different locations. And uh, yeah, if you want to do that, you can. The thing to beware is to make sure that you have enough fuel to escape. Anyway, I am going to take the science from here and store that and then go and get the other two science experiments. So again, go down. Oh, yeah, I should turn the light on so we can see inside the case here. Look at that. Whoa. Oh dear dear, not good. Collect data. You have to be kind of gentle with this sometimes. Collect the data. Collect! Remove it! Excellent, I got all the items. Now this, these science experiments are nothing more than dead mass. We shall return to the planet curb and store the experiments. Actually, you can just board, technically. So now we want to get back to Kerbin. Yes, I could just fire my engines and put myself into a low circular orbit. But given that your guys are new at this, I think it's a good idea to try and get back. So how do we get back? And I'm starting a maneuver node without starting to explain it. So the moon is orbiting around the planet Kerbin like this. What you want to do is slow down your, or your orbit when you leave the moon so that you fall back to the planet Kerbin. But to do that, you have to escape the moon first. So you have to accelerate relative to the moon, but slow down relative to Kerbin. Uh, so what you would do typically is roughly about here, about 45 degrees, I guess, is a good point. 
create a maneuver node there and imagine you're accelerating along your orbit and you see that what it's doing is it's kind of accelerating and then you leave going backwards. So as I accelerate faster, the periapse of Corbin is dropping. And I think this is just a perfect choice. If you don't, if you're not in the right location, you can try adjusting it to different places. You might find that your apoapse becomes more elongated, in which case you might want to move this around. Oh, move this around the orbit a little. You see this? See that? How my apoapse is being adjusted? And in doing so, I actually dropped my uh, periapse inside the atmosphere. So 285 meters per second is what I need, and that's where I need to do it. So let's set that up. 13 minutes away. Again, prepare my maneuver by pointing along the maneuver node. Time accelerate very quickly. 12, 11, 10. There's planet Kerbin moving around, and it's floating through space in its eternal celestial ballet or something like that. I would never make a great poet, would I? So there, it says we're about 30 seconds. Now, because I have got out of the spacecraft, it's forgotten what my acceleration is, so I don't have an estimated burn value. If you want to get that, you can do a little thrust like that, and it'll now tell me it thinks I need 16 seconds. So that's just by turning the thrust on just a little and then immediately turning it off. So we'll wait until 16 seconds, and then we'll do a 50% thrust. Actually, screw that. Let's just go 100%. Yes, of course. Really, the planet Kerbin's a rather rather big tar target. When you're going for small rendezvous, very accurate rendezvous, you want to be more careful. But uh, here, it's not such a problem. So I'm going to bring my periaps down to... I'm going to bring it down really fast, actually. Because I want to land on the daylight side. And I want to get back faster. So there, that's what's going to happen. We've we've gone from being in a circular orbit. We accelerated until we escaped the gravitational force of the moon. And by doing that, we will come out here. We will be heading down towards the planet Kerbin and we will land. We should probably kill our maneuver node and then watch that happen, right? Here we go. Time. We can just watch the moon float away. It is all in investigated and scienced up and everything. You see the the nav ball switched as we moved over to the sphere of influence of Kerbin. As we fall towards Kerbin, we can see it rotating beneath us. It has a six-hour orbital, or sorry, rotation period. And so yeah, from this point on, it really is a standard capsule re-entry. We're going to slow down with the parachute and land safely and recover the vessel. So let's skip forward to what happens after that. Ah, coming back to be greeted by Birdsong and to find out that on that mission we got 306 science. So that's pretty spiffy, I must say. We can go and blow that on all sorts of fancy toys at the R&D center. But uh, what shall I pick out? Well, I did say that one of the things I thought we should pick out was the electrics, because it gives us a solar panel. That's a useful thing to have. And another one that's useful to have is the thermometer and the mobile processing lab, which we can talk about a little more in the next episode. Now, I'm just looking forwards on this. This gives us one other instrument, which is kind of useful to have. Uh, having the scientific instruments really, really helps. So I'm going to get this. It takes 160 science, leaving me uh, not enough to get anything else. And so that's where we're going to leave it. We'll go, uh, we'll go further afield in the next episode. Until then, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.